Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation NBNG drive. Uh, today we're going to be building a muscle car, but not just any muscle car, this is going to be pretty much the most American muscle car ever. Uh, the goal today is just to have a massive engine and an extraordinarily high top speed and no handling whatsoever. Uh, so first thing we're going to do obviously is build a car, we're going to design it in a time lapse that we're going to hop on a beam and G drive at the end of the video. And I want to see how fast this car is and I want to see just how terrible it's going to drive because believe me guys, uh, this is going to be a fast car. So 1970s the year, we've got this very nice looking classic body shape. Uh, of course, steel panels is what everything has pretty much in 1970. Uh, there are a few exceptions, obviously, to some sports cars, but this is a muscle car, so steel it is. Uh, we have two options, really, for chassis material ladder, which was used in 1970, and also monocoque, which was also used in 1970. I think for this one, um, I'm going to go ladder for now, but I might change it to monocoque just to save some weight. Uh, it is quite a bit lighter, and this, for some reason, this body is just a little heavy, I don't know. Steel chassis material, front mounted, longitudinal engine, please. Uh, in the front, just some double wishbone. Nothing too fancy. I mean, solid axles are not what we're having today. Uh, but in the rear, solid axles all day, every day. Onto the engine now. We're going to design a new engine for our vehicle. And nothing says American muscle like a 90 degree a push rod V8 engine, right? Just max size. That's We, we can do that. Sure, we can do that. Um, now, my thought process behind this, we can either have an 11 liter V8, which for sure is, is pretty realistic, right? That's, that's not really realistic at all. That's a massive engine, that's, that's, that's absolutely obscene. Or, we can take two massive V8s and stick them together. Now, the biggest I've seen we can fit here, we have a massive stroke in a, in a small bore, or, you know, a smaller bore. We can fit, I think it's a 12 liter or so engine, a 12 liter V16, over 12 liter, 13 liter V16. No, 12, almost 12 and a half liter V16. Push rod engine, no turbos. We can't have that. And now we've got two two options here. Okay, we can have we can have you know quad two barrels. I mean we've got three options. I guess we can go for eight ECOEs, so individual throttle bodies and stuff. Here we can go for eight of those. That's that's fancy. Or we can go for four four barrel carburetors, which is absolutely obscene. Uh, does any car like does any muscle car actually have more than one four barrel carburetor? Let me know down below. I know I don't know they, um, some muscle cars Dodge and stuff has a uh, a six pack, so three two barrels. I'm not too sure if many cars have two four barrels. Um, because I think three two barrels was the difference there. Okay, we'll leave it on performance for now. This is a, it's a, you know it's a, it's a performance car. Um, now we can do two things here. Regular, super leaded. We're gonna go for super leaded. This is an all. This is this is America. This is America, and in America they've got lots of horsepower probably. Long tube headers, and then just yeah. This is this is a this is a performance car. We'll lower the RPM down a little bit though. Actually, five thousand seems already pretty good. This is a high, very high performance car right off the bat. With no tuning whatsoever. Five hundred and thirty horsepower. Five hundred and thirty. Oh wow, that's that's a, that's a fair bit. We can go for. 581 horsepower. We can probably increase the exhaust size. 600. 614 horsepower. 60, 668. I want an even number. It's fine. It's fine for them. Okay, 670 horsepower. That's totally okay. 670 horsepower. 670. And 735 pound feet of torque. It's a really respectable engine. The ramp's pretty high for 1970 as well. 12.4 liter. Uh, and then we're going to go to the coupe. We're going to go... We're using the convertible today. I mean, it's a coupe or a convertible, I guess. But uh, I want to change this color, and this is, like, the easiest. This, Yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. Uh, on to drivetrain. Rear-wheel drive manual. It's 1970. We can go a 5-speed, but a 4-speed is a little bit more realistic. <laughs> Look at the top speed. 330 kilometers an hour is our estimated top speed so far. Um, this thing would be competing against something like the Plymouth Superbird. Because, why not? But this is basically that. On absolute steroids, even with a V8, this thing would be insane. We're going to go for semi-slicks. Uh, this is like a top-of-the-line model, probably like a hot, super high-performance model. Very rare, probably. Maybe even maybe it's a prototype. Who knows? Uh, we're going to widen it just a bit, just for some style. The front can have... Two, uh, 35s is, is really large, but that's it's not out of the ordinary. And 265s. Now, those are both like pushing the limits of like 1970 tech for sure, if not higher than anything else. Like, for the early 70s, 265s is what you have probably in the rear. Very, very, very maximum size. And I'll, I'll do that. Space it up just a little bit. A little bit, a little bit of a stance there. Magnesium wheels, because you gotta have nice wheels, obviously. And the biggest brakes possible, because this thing... You're gonna need all the help it can get. 
semi-clad. We're gonna go plus five on the uh, the arrow quality. That's gonna give us a bit higher of a top speed. And we'll change this to two plus two. Sport. And just like basic or standard interior, we'll go for base. For, we'll go for standard for now. You know, it's still got some creature comforts. Power steering, best safety. And progressive, and we'll just do a normal tune for now. I'll fine tune it in a bit. So before we look at like the zero to 60 and top speed, five and a half MVG, which is obviously truly American. 4,100 or so pounds is like what, 2,000 kilograms or so. It's it's a little less than that, I think. But that's that's a heavy boy. That's pretty chonky for 1970 because uh, it's pretty awful in every way. But yeah, the, the car basically, it, it's got the basic shape. Then we just need to do uh, some things like body morphs and designing and stuff. What's the weight distribution? <laughs> it's so heavy in the front. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to design the car uh, in a short time lapse. Then we'll go over it real quick, and then we'll hop into Beam and G Drive, and I want to see top speed. So if you guys stay tuned for the end, then we'll see the actual top speed of this thing, without me dying, of course. Uh, so sit back, relax, guys, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, guys, so we are starting our 1970-ish muscle car build with a uh, individual grill and headlight sort of sections being placed out. We have the headlights uh, and the headlight housing at a bit of a slight angle, a slight kink, just to add a bit of detail, a bit of difference uh, to other 1970s cars of the time. Having sort of a split front grill that comes to a point as well, I think it's pretty cool, pretty different. Uh, and then adding uh, at the bottom there a front splitter, similar to like a Ford Mustang of the time. Uh, and then the hood bulge is being put on there as well, just toying around with the idea of having some air suck on the hood, because you always need a bit of air suck on any car that you make. Uh, adding a few more details here and there on the side, like mirrors, changing the color to this beautiful lime green or lime-ish green, and then playing around with some more hood details. Uh, and onto the side and the roof is what we're doing now, uh, just changing the roof to a darker fa fabric top. And then we have some steely, some dogish sort of hubcaps. Uh, and then some turret signals are being added just in the front, just to add a, a bit of character, a bit of detail here and there. Uh, toying around with a few things like the name of the car, uh, and adding a V16 badge to the front. Now on the side, adding a bit of a side skirt here and there, and a door handle to boot, and then working on a vent. Just to add a bit more detail, the side is where I struggle, especially with classic cars. Uh, they are pretty simple most of the time, maybe with some decals and stuff, which I try to add. Uh, the back end, we have a similar design to the front end, except it's just straight across, uh, with just quad tail lights with uh, we have the reverse lights in the middle of the inner lights as well adding a bit more detail there adding the name of the vehicle to the back of the trunk or the back of the vehicle itself uh then a few more things like bumpers in the back and then cutouts for the exhaust it's pretty plain but it's there uh then at last touch up details after the exhaust are gonna have to be uh the uh just like the front end we have the front diffuser we'll have a rear sort of diffuser on the back end going around with a few things like the brakes the arrow etc and then lastly, just a few more details on the side, like adding uh, basically some trim or some some j just some decals and stuff on the side. I end up taking this off though because it looks a bit weird in photo mode, and even in automation it looks a bit weird. But in front of us we have the 1970 Medora 16 SS. Alright guys, so like I said, the Medora 16 SS is in front of us. Uh, you know, there's not too many things probably distinguishing this vehicle from a regular Medora, which I've never made, I just sort of made it up. Uh, so this this, one, this one's got a V16 badge, we've got a, a front splitter that goes around the whole side, so we've got a splitter around the whole side, sure. Uh, so a lot of air suck in the hood there. A V16 badge in bright red. A double-decker wing, which I actually think looks pretty cool, I don't know if it fits in. I wish we had the rotor, the like the the uh, super bird kind of roadrunner kind of wing, but we we don't have that. But that's okay. Then we got a massive dual exhaust out the back. Uh, it's a pretty nice car. It's a pretty nice car. I don't mind. I actually really like the front end how it sort of goes up a bit more angry of a face. I wish we could probably lower this down just a little bit, just different. So one's higher, one's lower. Uh, what we're gonna do now is just jump into Beam and G. So we're gonna see if this thing can handle as terribly as it handles. It's gonna, it's gonna be awful, guys. It's a solid axle in the rear, 670 horsepower, 12. And a half liters of American Bliss. Uh, I also want to see the top speed, which now is limited due to a due to aerodynamics. Uh, just over 300 kilometers an hour, 310. We're gonna hop into Beam and G, and we're gonna see what this beast can do. All right, guys. So we're finally in Beam and G Drive with the Medora 16 SS. Uh, it looks pretty good to be in the black. Always looks kind of weird. The fa the fabric, the leather, or the cloth looks kind of weird to Beam and G. Uh, that's okay, that's, that's how it is. This is the automation test check. We're gonna do just a full lap of this. 
uh, just to see sort of where this thing, how, how it drives and sort of where it sits uh, in the performance side of things. Then at the end, we're going to do a top speed run to see if this thing can actually achieve uh, 300 or so kilometers an hour. And, you know, it sounds okay, actually. It's, uh, you know, I thought it was going to sound bad. I don't like the V16 that much. We're going to go in first, or we're going to third person, I think, for this one. Third person it is. Lots of wheel spin in first. Actually, it's not bad. The brakes aren't terrible. It's a wheel spin in second, but not, like, awful. As long as we're not, like, put to the floor. This is definitely better, much better, than my, uh, 6 liter inline 6 1920s or so race car, performance-wise. Not, not, I mean, horsepower-wise. I guess perfor all, all performance-wise, but, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a heavy car. 4,100 pounds is, is fairly heavy. It's porky. Down to first, and we're good. Wheel spin, to, we'll go to second really quick here. It's actually, like, it, it's it's not wheel spinning very bad at all. We've got 670 horsepower. This is super surprising. It sounds decent. A lot of power to the corners, and only, like, it, it's spinning, but it's still totally controllable. Very shocking. We haven't even locked the, uh, the differential. Wow, especially when you get the high revs, it's got a lot of pulling power. It pulls even harder. 240 kilometers an hour or so, 230 or whatever, with ease down to third. It's gonna be a decent lap. Not the best lap, but obviously we've got only 265 tires and 225s up front. Turning is not its friend. This is actually like a very competent handling also car. It, it's pretty neutral steering. It's it, it's pretty neutral. It's, it's a tiny bit oversteering, maybe. Maybe even understeering. I gotta check actually. Let's take a look. Let, let's think about the steering wheel. Let's go to second. Oh, ready to go to first. It's fine. So, let's see here. We'll set a second. And then go to... So, like... It's understeer. It understeers, which is super surprising. I, I, I tuned it for a little understeer, but, uh, no, it understeers nicely. It's easy to control. It's not a death trap. A little bit of, a little bit of, uh, tail kicking out there. That's because we've got so much torque. But 750 pound feet of torque, something like that. A lot of torque. Obviously not a great time. We're not going to set records today, and this car is not a record setter. Uh, it's got 1970 tech, so, you know, I expect nothing but the best. And, you know, muscle cars don't need to handle that well. Oh, gosh. Not doing bad. It pulls so good, though. The brakes are overheating. <laughs> brakes. We're going to go free one for a second. I just want to see where the brakes are overheating. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, we can't really see in here, but I just want to see if we can get, get them to overheat. Because they were definitely getting, getting pretty hot there. 600 degrees, this thing, something like that. A lot, a lot, a lot of heat. Break. And we'll see again. Yeah, but it's actually not even overheating now. <laughs> it's actually... This is a, my best driving American car, probably. Like, it's got 1970 tech, so, like, it doesn't have, like, as much grip as a newer car, but, uh... It actually handles. I, I tuned the suspension a bit. I didn't show you guys the tuning graph, but it, it was it was okay. It was okay. Uh, we're gonna hop into just a pure grid map, and I just want to sort of see. Can we do, can we do. No. Uh, we'll hop into the grid map, and we'll just see if this thing can actually do uh, the top speed it's it's set up to do. Now, as we're coming to the end of this of this, of this today's build, uh, yeah, the car looks pretty good in BMG. Uh, it handles surprisingly pretty good, actually. Not like an American muscle car at all. Uh, all that's left, really, is just sort of a top speed. We're gonna have some wheel spin. Like, it's not bad. Pulling the really high revs, it just starts to spin. Like, look at that. Through second, no wheel spin at all, really. Already 200 kilometers an hour, or nearly. It's not bad. I say it's not bad a lot, but this car is just, like, overall, it's so decent. Which, in my books, is good. Like, you know, it handles really nice. It's definitely slowing down here at 240 kilometers an hour. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh god, that's not good at all. We got a lot of downforce apparently in the back. I never noticed. I mean, it's, it's picking up there, 270. It's getting faster. We only have four speeds. Five speeds maybe would have been a bit better, but uh, four speeds I think is like... Still, I mean, a V16 is not realistic. I mean, a 12 liter engine is not realistic, but... A four speed is the realistic part of this car, apparently. 300, come on. Wow. The 300. We can, can we hit the top speed? We're still going. 
The car is driving properly. It's so. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. That's 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 beauty, in its purest form. Three eleven, three twelve. Three eleven is top speed. Three twelve. Wow. We're gonna hammer on the brakes and just sort of see what happens. I guess I'm not gonna steer it either. We're just gonna hammer on the brakes. Three twelve is is that it? That's it. Okay. Three, two, one. Come on, stop! <laughs> it's such a bad stopping distance. <laughs> it doesn't even want to stop anymore. Not almost, but it's got like 50% more. Uh, and it looks very good, uh, of course, as well. And it does, it does burnouts. Not really donuts. Not donuts. Nope. It does burnouts, though. It does burnouts, though. So that's, that's, that's something, I think. Oh, wow. It'll do burnouts literally from, from a standstill. Yep, pretty much a standstill. That's awesome. Well, we'll finish it off here, guys. If you guys like the build, leave a like down below. Um, there's going to be a live stream coming up uh, later today. So make sure to be around for the live stream at 5 p.m. CST. This is coming out in the morning. The live stream is coming out uh, in the afternoon. So see you guys there. We are going to be testing some awesome rally cars. Uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe. Uh, join the Discord linked in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll, uh, you know, I guess I'll uh, see you next time.